Hi everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with the Curators. I'm Vanessa, and with me I have our artist, Danielle, and our fermentation nerd, Jen. Um, and Jen here has made a couple of cocktails based on some of Danielle's work, and we're going to take a look at uh, the cocktails and that fermentation process, and then talk a little bit about uh, her work. So. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got into fermentation and like what the process is that you're going to be doing? Yeah, so I am Jen from Chicago originally. Moved to Seattle to brew beer. Um, I was a home brewer, so I kind of got into fermentation uh, back in Chicago and moved here six years ago. And I've been brewing professionally since then. And part of the reason why I started fermenting food and doing lacto fermentations at home are because of COVID. Just had a lot of time on my hands, um, especially at home. And it is a great project to have when you have both of those things at the time. It's a uh, home space. So yeah, um, we'll be doing two lacto fermentations. Uh, one is more of a pickling, which will be our blackberry uh, spritzer. And then the other one is a little bit of a longer fermentation, more of an actual lactobacillus fermentation. Um, and that will be make our Bloody Mary mix. So this, um, the blackberry is more of like a pickling, um, again, and it's pretty straightforward. You just need some apple cider vinegar, some sugar. Uh, I'm to put that, thank you. Um, blackberry, yeah, blackberries and some mint. Um, with fermentations and pickling, it's really important to weigh everything out. Um, it's uh, just, I don't really know why. <laughs> uh, Weighing is usually more accurate yeah. than like scooping, right? Weighing is definitely more accurate than scooping. It's, uh, and especially more with the fermentation, you need a specific brine, so a specific oh. amount of salt in there to get rid of any unwanted bacteria um, or microbes that are actively trying to beat out your lactobacillus fermentation that's happening in there. Um, with this particular guy, it's just more important for uh, flavor compounds. So what I have, I only have, um, we're gonna make a smaller version of this guy and we're gonna go with the ounces. So I'm just gonna put pretty much as many blackberries in, in this jar that'll fit. Um, the other thing, so some people will want to actually cut these up into smaller pieces just to get the juiciness out and get the sugars out a little bit more. I like to keep them just because we're using it for a drink. Um, I like to keep them whole. Uh, they look a little bit better and you can also eat the actual blackberry as, as like a garnish later on. So that is three ounces of blackberries in this particular guy. And then I'm just gonna throw like three mint leaves in here. So there's that. And then the vinegar, we're just gonna top it off in this particular one. Um, in this part, for pickling, it's more about covering all of the ingredients. And then we'll add the sugar based on the weight of the entire mixture. So cool. <laughs> I would, never, I would never think to do that. Yeah. Like cover everything in apple cider vinegar and just like. And then, yeah, and then, yeah. and that's, so what's happening here is the vinegar is gonna break down the blackberries themselves. The sugar is just gonna aid in the process of that, of the breaking down of those, of the fruit itself. Um, so I think I'll usually do like a 3% brine essentially is what we're making is like a sugar brine, so six, so we'll put 1.8 ounces of, so this total concoction is 6.31 ounces. So we're gonna put about 1.8 ounces of sugar in here. We'll see if we can fit it all in. Um, which is the 3% that you were saying? Yep. Yeah. So, um, and again, it's really just aiding in that breaking down process. It's gonna sweeten, we'll definitely sweeten it as well. Um, I think last time I put in like half, like, like a 50% brine of sugar, and it was super, super sweet, so. Is it kind of similar to like bread when you, when you do yeast and you put in the, I guess it is sugar, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
In this particular case, um, again, just because it's a pickling, it's a little bit different than a fermentation. Um, so again, this is just making a harm of like homogenous mixture of all that stuff. It's gonna break down. It goes much faster than a fermentation. So this is basically a sped up fermentation, which is essentially what the difference between pickling and fermenting um, things are. And we just need a normal lid for this guy. And this one being a little bit more straightforward, you can just keep this out on your, just shake it off, get it on there, some stuff in there. Um, this so one you can just keep on your counter for a day, 24 hours, really doesn't need a lot of time. Um, keeping it at room temperature, again, will get those sugars dissolving a little bit faster and um, break up down all of that blackberry into some juicy goodness, which is going to end up, it's going to go from this weird concoction to this kind of like, gelat almost like very lightly gelatinous, but very sweet, a little bit of vinegary kind of taste to it. But yes. Of course, yeah. And that one I put lemongrass in there too. Um, yeah. Alrighty, and then as far as for the spritzer itself goes, let's take a, uh, let me be a little fancy right now, make you guys, if you guys have um, so just throw half of a glass full of ice, and then um, we are going to put in, so what I've, found is a good ratio is a double shot of your concoction with a full shot of, um, of vodka. This stuff is really potent. So. <laughs> uh, so just be aware of that, but it does make like a really beautiful, like deeply hued color. Like I really like right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the mint really works super well in there too. Um, it's maybe my favorite part of the bag. We'll just kind of eyeball. Yeah. I like absolute vodka. For these kinds of drinks, I'm thinking that it's better to enhance, to bring out the flavor of the fermentation rather than the alcohol itself. I think the alcohol is just like a boozy fun time to like kind of like go with these really beautiful naturally uh, made ingredient natural ingredients. That also being said, speaking of ingredients, it's always super important to have like the freshest, best ingredients that you can. Um, I just ran to PCC before I got here to do this, <laughs> just to make sure everything was super fresh. Um, and then I like Topo Chico mineral water. Again, it's just super clean and it really it gives you a little bit of spritz, but again, just allows the flavor of the fermentation itself to come through. It's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, and I can definitely see what you were talking about with the colors of um, the natural water. Yeah. See how it has just like that dark red at the very bottom and then it gets a little bit lighter as it goes. Yeah, especially with like that ice on the top. Mm -hmm. and it makes it all the color change. Yeah, a little gradient in there. And then, yeah, you just pop uh, one of these blackberries on, which feel free to try one. Oh, uh, <laughs> and a sprig of man. You may. And that is the black, it's a, it's like a berry shrub, blackberry oh. shrub. Oh my god. It's pretty sick. That is so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Oh my god. I can't wait to try one of these things. Yeah. It's amazing. Thanks. Awesome. Oh wow. Yeah, so this one's a little more complicated and it takes lots of fermentations pretty much rely on the microbes that are naturally occurring on fruits and veggies. Um, garlic is a potentially potent, um, has, has quite a lot of yeast on this, the uh, bud itself. So whenever you do a garlic ferment, anything with garlic fermenting in it, which there's a whole lot of... Um, there's a lot you can and can't do with garlic as far as fermentations go. Like olive oil, you definitely don't want to ferment that in for very long. Um, because of botulism and stuff. This particular kind of fermentation though is just gonna be that salt brine, so it's gonna actually um, keep away any, it's gonna keep the pH of the actual uh, mixture itself pretty low. And you want a very low pH, again, to ward away harmful bacteria like 
botulism or mold um, or anything else like that. So I'm gonna start with the garlic. I'm just gonna crush it a little bit, get the skins off of it. You can keep the skin on too if you want. I just like it all. And this guy. Just me, uh, Bloody Berry mix. It's typically tomato juice. Tomatoes are super in season right now, so I'm going with heirloom tomatoes, but you can use any tomato that you want. These ones are just pretty. Um, heirloom tomatoes are a little more earthy, and because they're in season, they're super fresh, again, and they have just like, they have a more microbes on them, basically. Uh, so we're just gonna I know, right? It's, it's so pretty. I don't know, you guys, it's really cute. <laughs> and again, these one, these particular tomatoes also um, kind of have the same color scheme going on as the art. A little bit, oh, like yeah. yellow and red hue. So, so like kind of rabbit. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and heirloom tomatoes are just beautiful, also. So they're kind of they're fun to play around with. So yeah, I'm just gonna do like just like a rough chop with them. And then, uh, don't have to do anything too special. We're really relying on that skin and the tactus of the tomato itself to provide the fermentation, uh, the lactobacillus, pretty much, that we're using. <laughs> the tactfulness, <laughs> um, in tactfulness of the tomatoes because uh, we do, yeah, again, we want those skins to create all those lovely uh, microbes, and then it's going to, it'll eventually dissolve, actually, this, it'll break the, these tomatoes down pretty well, um, so don't think, like, it's going to be a super chunky, this isn't necessarily going to be a super chunky um, fermentation, it'll be pretty chill. And despite what I said earlier, you do want to weigh this all out. So we're just going to kind of get us over with that. Is. And we go like, I'd say that's about 10 ounces of tomatoes in there. And then one garlic clove. Um, the celery, I think, kind of, again, like just as a Bloody Mary mix, it brings out like a nice celery flavor to it. And again, the freshness of the celery is bringing out some good healthy microbes um, from the skin of the sky itself. Pretty much all vegetables um, can actually provide the, essentially like the yeast that we're using to ferment. Do you wash it first or just? Yeah, do wash it. You always want to wash all of your vegetables first, mostly just because you don't want any un, like some dirt, um, especially with the celery. I washed all these before I brought them down. Um, Especially celery is super dirty. Any bugs that are on there, you just want to keep it as clean as possible. Um, the other nice thing about the tomatoes is that they also provide a little bit of glucose, so the sugar is all naturally occurring in here. Oh, okay. And that is what that lactobacillus is going to ultimately be feeding on. Um, so with some vegetables, again, there's more yeast, for example, and the garlic, like I said before, but these veggies on their own will um, provide that yeast naturally as well. And then I like to put a little serrano in there just to spice it up a little bit. Uh, keep the seeds on if you want it to be super hot. Take them out if you don't, but either way, you just want to chop it up a little bit. Just like those little tiny pieces here. I'm going to put kind of a lot in this one just because I like a spicy bloody berry. So we've got about 16 ounces of veggies in there right now. Um, I'm going to throw in a little bit of mustard seed. Gives it a nice mustardy flavor. And it just really complements the whole mixture itself. And in here we we're going to do, do like 0.05 ounces of Mustard seed, not a whole lot. Just a little bit to get a little bit of flavor in. And I'm gonna put some black peppercorn. A lot of people like to put black peppercorn in pretty much every fermentation. It's just mel mellows out and blends really nicely with all the other flavors that are going on. And that's about 0.03 ounces of black peppercorn. Um, so now with this guy, 
Um, with these kinds of fermentations, you want there to be as little oxygen as possible in the actual vessel itself. So we're gonna smush them all down. I have these little glass weights that are really great to do that with. And then also as you're, as this ferments, all of those vegetables are gonna to wanna to rise up. And you don't want to, you don't want any of the vegetables to be outside of the brine that we're about to make um, because they'll mold. Especially if you don't use an airlock. We're gonna, I'm gonna use an airlock, but if you don't use an airlock, and or if you are just using like a cheesecloth or something, it is especially important to make sure that your vegetable stays underneath the brine, otherwise you will get mold and it will ruin your fermentation pretty easily. So again, these are a little more sensitive um, fermentations. We're not gonna make the brine for it. So we have a total of 16 and a half ounces um, of vegetable, a solid matter in there. Not only do you want to have really fresh vegetables, but you also want to have really good water, um, preferably dechlorinated. So if you're using just faucet water, you'll want to let it sit out at least overnight and just let some of that chlorine get out because that will stunt the fermentation. Um, I'm just using a spring water. It's getting really bougie with it over here. Uh, <laughs> I also didn't prepare for the water part of it, so that's really important. <laughs> um, and that added three more ounces. So we have a total of 19 ounces of total volume in here. And again, on a 3% brine, it's about three, what is that? Three and a half ounces. So we'll do three and a half ounces of sugar, of salt, rather. That'll go in there. Alternatively, you can just make a 3% brine and throw it in here. Um, I just like to be really accurate with it. So why are we using salt in this one instead of sugar? So in this one, we're gonna use salt. The sugars are already in there from the vegetables. Okay. The salt is going, because it's a natural fermenting, a natural fermentation, it's going to produce, there's gonna be a lot of bacteria that want to come in. And this salt brine actually harbors any unwanted bacteria. And the lactobacillus actually thrives in a salt brine. Um, so it's gonna be the main thing that takes over this entire fermentation. You can kind of think of it as like, as the yeast, if you're gonna make like sourdough bread or something like that, you want just that one bread yeast to be the main flavor and sourdough fermentations are a little bit easier, but this will, because they're so, because you're using um, like vegetables and natural produce, there's a lot, there's an opportunity for a lot of other things to come you know, up. Um, it's also, we don't have like a specific yeast that we're using like you would in a sourdough. Um, so we're just really trying to control it. And it does seem like a lot of salt, and it is. Um, <laughs> 19, 3, yeah, so that's your guess um, We're just going to stop at about two ounces on this one. I think I might have misjudged the jar. So anyways, you have your salt in there. I'll usually actually dump the water, I'll weigh it out, dump the water out, make sure the salt's nicely dissolved in there. We're just gonna shake this guy up a little bit. Um, I am a really huge fan of just making sure that everything is super clean and that the fermentation is not oxygenated at all. So I use these gasket stainless steel lids and um, airlocks that keeps the airlock is a little check valve system, so you put a little bit of water in there or whatever you like. Put a salt brine in there also. And of course, I'm going to make a mess. Let's do this over. So then we'll mess out later. Yeah. Um, and you just want to make sure you push it all down, get rid of as much oxygen as possible in that whole entire jar. Cover it up. How's so your leaving the weight in there? Yeah, I'm gonna leave the weight in there. It's gonna do two things again. Once this, as this all ferments, it's gonna get really mushy and it's gonna start to essentially breaking down. And uh, that's gonna prevent floaties from coming up to the surface. Again, preventing like mold or anything uh, gross coming in there. And it's also just gonna keep everything nice and um, homogenous. In, in the uh, jar itself. Okay. Um, 
yeah, the weight is, I've done it without weights before, and it just creates like a really messy situation. This airlock's not gonna fit on here because I put too much stuff in, but you get kind of the idea. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just gonna throw a little bit of water in my airlock. It's gonna keep the oxygen out, but it will allow the carbonation to escape. So while this ferments, what you have are a couple of things going on. You can have a couple of different kind of fermentations. This is, again, a lactobacillus one. So this is, instead of creating alcohol, like a, like a beer yeast would or something like that, um, it's actually producing, it'll still produce carbon dioxide, um, so it will get quite bubbly, but it's also going to, instead, create a lactic acid, which is where you get those, like, briny, um, vinegary flavors from. And so this little guy, there it is. And so this little guy, you see it's kind of like nice and pretty also in there. Yeah. Yeah. So that is going to eventually turn into this. So as, as you can see, it is super broken down. Um, actually, it wasn't this fine. Um, I did take that and blend it up a little bit just so I could make a mix out of it. Um, and now, so after, so you'll want to let that sit out for like a week on your counter, two weeks. You can go as far as like six months if you want, if you really want to get that like really great flavor and mellowed out. Um, these ones I just did a little quick, more quickly. Throw it in your fridge and it'll be good for like years if you can make it last that long. <laughs> um, this particular one only had going, I had it out for uh, two weeks refrigerated it for another two weeks and um, we'll see what it tastes like. So we'll make a little blank beer mix if you want to smell it. Um, <laughs> the garlic definitely overpowered in this one a little bit, which uh, I'm kind of a favorite it's good personally. Yeah, it's really nice. Thanks. The more garlic the better. <laughs> I think so. I'm a huge garlic fan personally and in that particular one I think there were like two or three garlic cloves in there. But um, yeah, this one takes out a little bit. <laughs> All right, so let's make the Bloody Mary mix, or the Bloody Mary for this guy, which I think, what did we end up calling it? The something, something Italian, because it's a little more Italian than anything. Um, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. You'll want to strain it. There's quite a bit of chunky matter in there, obviously, so you can just strain it up. Alternatively, if you like a more chunky um, Bloody Mary, feel free to just keep that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually strain the vodka through the mixture itself just to kind of get some more stuff out of it. Um, we could do a little light one. Let's, I'll do one shot of vodka. A lot of people like to use um, Absolute Pet Bar, which is also a really great, it's a good Bloody Mary vodka just because it has a little bit of pepper in it. Um, so it gives it a little bit more definition. <laughs> Alrighty, and then again, top it off with a little turbo. Get a little, spark, a little sparkly going. And throw a little ice cube down. In there, just to keep it frosty. Or you can blend it too. If you like. And then there you go. We got a little Bloody Mary mix. A little bit more pale just because we keep using lighter tomatoes, but if you were to use like all red tomatoes, it's going to look a little bit more red. In the meantime, yeah, that's that guy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Even the color on that one kind of uh, feels like the red and the yellow, making it that orangey. That Makes are the two color. colors of, of that particular piece. Yeah, totally. And actually, I kind of want to, I do love these tomatoes. I was so just going to ask. Yeah, the garnish with that. I was like, do you, I, was, I wanted to be like, do you put tomato skin in there? Yeah. Too? Because I would just be like pulling those out and eating them. Exactly, yeah. Let's. Oh, and of course, always. Don't ever forget. You're so <laughs>
Oh my god, so good. Yeah, these are really oh, good. Oh, I really like them. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Goes great with the art. Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so, um, this one, the Blackberry, mm -hmm. um, we were thinking, or you were telling us that uh, you were inspired to make this one off of uh, her piece, Bowl with a Napkin, Messy Little Slut. <laughs> um, based off the colors, and they totally, they, they're not so <laughs> Yeah, especially the way this is like all sitting in the bottom now. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's just really, yeah, that picture is so perfect for that drink, and just seeing the blackberry, because I had made the shrub before I had actually seen the art, but I hadn't made the drink yet, and once I saw that that light pink and it just turns and it has that dark hue in it, it yeah, it just made such, such perfect sense. And putting the blackberry at the bottom really like made that bottom color pop. I thought, yeah. So it definitely works. They work in tandem. And I think that the name of the photo actually is really appropriate for this particular <laughs> <laughs> also, You cannot taste the vodka very well in this particular. Very so what you're saying is you can get a little messy. You can make them very messy. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially <it's hilarious. laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> something that um, is really personal, mm -hmm. like really, really deeply personal that um, uh, that I don't feel comfortable really like talking about verbally, right. but that I could actually express on um, on paper or on any other medium, but specifically because I've been working with paper with this whole show. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I was thinking. It's like, how do I abstract this to give it the same energy? Like, it, like any yeah. abstraction, right? Like. How do I give it the same energy, but but not say the thing directly, right. mm -hmm. um, which is pretty simple, but um, yeah. yeah. A lot of your work um, is actually very personal, and I don't know how much people realize that. Um, so it's it's interesting to hear you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like as an artist, you can't you can't make work without everything that you do coming to it, right? The music you listen to, the people you hang out with, mm -hmm. um, you know, how you eat, like how much sleep you're getting, everything. And so um, it's interesting because the work is super personal, but it also speaks to the people around me. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's, and it's like right now the work is more, and, and actually I feel like it always has been about like the intimate group of people around me, um, whether it's partners or friends or like my daughter, or, like that kind of thing. Um, but I'm also starting to think a little bit more outside of that, um, just because I know that I have that responsibility as an artist as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so you have a, a different cocktail there. <laughs> <laughs> you have the Bloody Mary. Yeah. Um, and that one, um, you, Jen, you took inspiration from uh, I Should Say King, the name of the piece. Um, yeah. Was there anything in particular that you well, actually, you mentioned earlier um, whole Sunday morning and the remembrance of um, the remembrance of forgetting. No, it's uh, yeah, just the image itself with the again with the like bow. It kind of reminded me of like forget me not or whatever. But I think a Sunday morning Bloody Mary, a good Bloody Mary makes us to help you forget. I don't know whether you're, you're Monday or. Uh, <laughs> The last week you had, or, or the hair of the dog, hair of the dog, oh, especially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And especially, um, yeah, this particular drink. And I hate to be so focused on the actual like visual aspects of it, but yeah, it like you said, a Bloody Mary should be red. This particular one fermented down to a more like weird mustardy kind of yellow, um, and I just kind of yeah. That picture just really spoke to both of those things for me. Yeah. And I just love that yellow finger. I really <laughs> love that. I'm so drawn 
<laughs> Honestly, with that piece too, I really love the, the all the the tangles of the the red. What I was also kind of uh, thinking of is uh, like strings or ribbons. So I also went to that place too of like kind of the, the reminder on your finger, but kind of uh, I'm like not thinking of the right word, but like. Like the messiness of it, mm -hmm. like it wasn't like a, a regular, like pristine, whatever, but it was like coming undone somehow. Totally. Yeah. Um, and your face is telling me that there's something well, it's so, to be said about well, it's your so, work. It's so great because, like, uh, it's so for me, like, it's so great to hear what people think about the work yeah. and what I was thinking about, in, like, in contrast. Oh. Right, okay. and so I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. that's really cool because it's it's. It's not a ribbon, mm -hmm. but I do like that, like hearing the, like, okay, I can't say that. It's like saying like, it's not the pipe. It's not a pipe, right? Like whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, um... I mean, there's always these two meanings. Like right. there's the, the, the artist's intention behind yeah. the work and then there's the viewer's intention and they don't always have to line up. No, they don't. And I, I just think it's like, cause I, and of course I just went to that thing where it was like, oh, it's not a ribbon, but like whatever, <laughs> it's a ribbon to you guys and that's fine, right? Um, like, I was thinking about the intimacy of, like, wrapping someone's hair, like, playing with someone else's hair. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so my partner has, like, really long, like, like, wavy kind of curly hair, and so I was thinking about, like, how I play with the ends of it. Um, and, yeah, so. But I, that's, like, I don't know. <laughs> um. And that is like there's kind of like that lazy kind of like the way that it is and like it's not like super wound tight, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which yeah. I really, but I really appreciate. I like so the love kind hearing of vibe that. and intention like from our perspective and yours. Like, yeah, still line up. Yeah, like, yeah. Know, oh, totally. Which, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just works so well. Yeah, I like even better the looseness of the yeah, just mm -hmm. like the getting loose. Yeah, the the looseness of I guess the curl and that thing, but yeah. 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 <laughs> I love finding out what the art meant to you when you were making it. I love that art aspect of art because I am so one dimensional. I'm just like, oh yeah, quill on your finger. It's more. It's so much. I love that there's depth and layers to like pieces and uh, your obviously yeah your perspective and your intention versus our perspectives of it. So, yeah, I think it, someone had asked me this recently about like what you know like. Do you want to like? Do you want people to get it? And I was like, ah, that's not necessary, right? Yeah. Like, it's like I make the work, I put it out there. I hope that people get something from it, mm -hmm. but it's not, you know. If again, like it goes back to what I was just saying, it's like, well, if you don't see that it, it's hair, it's fine, mm -hmm. right? Like it's not. Um, but I just love, I love hearing. It. That's why, like, a lot of the times I feel like I don't want titles on the wall of the work because mm -hmm. I don't want to give it away. Like I feel um, I want people to really kind of be like, oh, what is this for me, right? So, yeah. That was also in looking at the show. That to me was also really interesting because none of the when I got all of the works, none of them have names on them, and I was like, oh, and I have to like figure out what is like what are we like what is it? What are you going for? And that was super fun. And this, and I feel like this show in particular, totally like you have you sit there and you think about it for a while. And, I did that with a lot of pieces on this one. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a really fun show. Thank you. I really like that about shows where we can have like the the time for the, the viewer to see the work and then to learn more about the artist and the reason behind the work and then be able to kind of string all of that together. And I think that that's, that's really important when we're seeing any work, but in particular. Uh, all right, guys. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cocktails with the Curators. And thank you, Jen and Danielle, for joining us, talking a little bit about fermentation and your work. Um, so, yeah, uh, check us out on gallerybeard.com or at gallerybeard on Facebook. And we'll see you all next time. <laughs>